I'm gonna be honest, I think I was a little worried going into Act 5 because the prison arc with Act 3 was such a big drop in quality and because there were so many different plot threads that were hanging for Act 5, I was really concerned that Fontaine would actually just drop the ball or just a pretty poor arc overall that would just ruin it. I'm actually really satisfied with how Fontaine ended. It is much closer in quality to Act 1 and 2 than it is Act 3. By no means is Act 5 perfect, but I do think that it reaches higher peaks than some of the other Archon quests. Fair warning that Act 5 is about four and a half hours long. It's a really long quest, so I would recommend just like breaking it up in like 30 minute to 40 minute intervals. If you haven't played the quest yet or you're holding off for a bit, don't worry because everything I'm going to be discussing will be spoiler free. I'm not going to be talking about any major plot reveals or anything like that i just want i'm just gonna talk about the overall quality of it also a lot of the footage that you're going to be seeing is all going to be from acts one through four it's not going to contain anything from act five so here are the three things that i think Fontaine completely nailed for act five the visual storytelling in this arc is done really well saying genshin is a story heavy game is the understatement of a century you know and part of the problem with how long genshin stories take is that they have to be more clever when it comes to visual storytelling because of how long these quests are. If you're just going through the cutscenes and it's just simple, we're gonna cut to this character talking, then we're gonna cut back to them talking, then we're gonna cut back here, that can get really boring really quickly. But I think for Act 5 and in Fontaine in general, they use a much more dynamic camera and they experiment more with different shot compositions that actually make the story more engaging and more interesting to look at. For some conversations, we'll have characters do like a split screen when they're in conflict with each other. You'll have of these kind of transitions into flashbacks. In one particular scene, they do this sort of time lapse so they can really get into the thoughts of this character and understand what they've been feeling during this time frame. And it's done really well. And it's one of the more memorable scenes of all of Genshin, in my opinion. Another thing I think that this arc does really well is that they tackle themes that involve loneliness and, and what does it mean to deal with fate. There's this particular part of the act where Paimon and the Traveler discuss the question of, if the world was ending, what would you do on your last day? Can you continue to have hope in a hopeless situation? And we talked to various characters about their own perspective on this prophecy and what they would do on their last day. I think it's a really good conversation that Paimon and the Traveler have. I think for some of the NPCs, they drop these really profound lines about being able to live life every single day, regardless of when it ends. It's a very good scene. I really like that a lot. These themes are explored fairly naturally, and a lot of the characters will each have their own perspective on the matter. We get to learn more about the characters and we get to actually um, understand the weight of this prophecy that's hovering over Fontaine. The last thing I want to talk about is that the character writing in this quest is absolutely incredible. For example, I just want to start off with the NPCs, right? When I think about NPC writing in Genshin, it's not particularly strong. From the course of writing characters like Tepe to writing characters like Durnizad, and now we have characters like Silver and Melis, Oivers has gotten better at writing NPCs and making them shine in their own right. Silver and Melus are much better written than Tepe. Tepe, and I'm I'm really sorry for <laughs> I know there's dozens of Tepe's fans out there. I'm so sorry. Um, if you like Tepe, that's completely fine. Tepe does strike an emotional chord for some people, uh, but I do think that he could have been executed better. Back to Silver and Malus, in my opinion, a good NPC character should be interesting in their own right, but should also be able to enhance either the playable characters or the main characters in terms of their writing. What makes Malus and Silver shine are their relationship with Navia. I'm really glad to say that they get their own moment to shine. And speaking of Navia, Navia once again gets more screen time than she did in Act 3 and Act 4. We really get to see who she is more as a character. We get to see how she operates as a leader. And if you liked how she was in Act 2, then you're going to love her in Act 4. Another character that absolutely shines in this arc is Nouvellet. Nouvellet's arc that he has in Fontaine is really one of the stronger arcs that I've seen from any of the characters in Genshin. You know, he goes on this very emotional arc from not really being able to understand humanity and their emotions to fully being in love with people, to fully caring about who they are, and to fully understanding them. Ray Chase's performance as Nouvellet is absolutely amazing. You can really feel how much weight there is on his words and the amount of sorrow that he feels and the amount of emotion that he carries with every speech. Nouvellet really is just one of the more complex characters that we've seen so far in Genshin. 
And of course, last but not least, we cannot talk about Fontaine without talking about the star of the show, Farina de Fontaine. I don't think it's unfair to say that Farina, when she first released in Act 1, that she was a very polarizing character. I think for a lot of people, they either really got annoyed by how theatrical she was, by how much of a brat she was, and I think for some people, they enjoyed those aspects of her. I, for one, was somebody that thought she was a very entertaining character. I liked that she wasn't immediately friendly with the Traveler, and that she did have this sort of air against her. I thought that was very fun to see on screen. We don't really get a character arc from her, but what we do get is more depth. We actually get to look into her past and actually see why it is she acts this way. And I'm going to be honest with you, it was really emotional. A lot of Verena's scenes legitimately made me tear up. And I'm somebody that doesn't usually tear up when it comes to certain video games or certain storytelling. It's not to say I don't cry. Certain movies and certain games have made me cry in the past. But for Genshin, I've never felt the need to really tear up until until Act 5. There's a lot of depth to Farina that I honestly wasn't expecting. And I already liked her as a character. So for Act 5 to happen and completely just come in like a wrecking ball of emotion. For me, Farina is up there as a one of the best written characters and probably my favorite new Archon. And from what I've seen is that Farina has had an effect on a lot of people within the Genshin community because a lot of people have flipped their attitudes on her. People that probably weren't, that did not have a high opinion of her, at least now, at the very least, can understand where she's coming from or at least sympathetic to her. And I think for me, that is still good writing. I think if you're able to at least get people to understand the character and their motivations and actually make them them sympathetic that's solid you did your job you win good job genshin you won you know she got so many emotional story beats and amber lee connors does an amazing job as farina i mean by the end of the arc i just wanted to give farina a hug it was just it was just such an emotional journey for this character and i absolutely loved it she doesn't get her character arc finished in the main quest but for her character quest she does go on her own personal character arc now as much as i'm raving about this act i do want to say that it wasn't perfect and that there definitely were some flaws with it. For example, I do think that the, the ending with the boss was a little bit rushed. We really should have gotten a much stronger climax with that. Visually, visually and thematically, the boss is really cool, but we just needed more time for it to shine, to hit home. Child does get a little moment to shine. However, I would say that I wish he got more time and I wish that his storyline in Fontaine was more tightly written. But the moment that we do get with Child is still pretty solid. I also would say that for me personally, I do wish there was more lasting consequences on the overall world. We do get a really good lore bomb at the end so make sure to have that conversation at the end of the quest so overall yeah i would say that fontaine was a really well done arc and i'm happy to see that genshin story writing that it does feel like that hoyer versus writers are now starting to get into a little bit of a groove and they now have a clear identity of how they want to tell the story and it's really good because now i'm even more hopeful for uh, for not long and i'm really excited to see what we see there if you like this video and you want to watch more of my takes on genshin and star rail storytelling drop a like and subscribe see you next time